three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got someone online. I don't know where they are right now, but they're somewhere in this world, and her name is Georgia Woodbine. You there, Georgia? Yes, I am. How are, are you? you? From New are York. You? New York's here. New York. I was going to say, are you in Georgia right now? <laughs> I'm in Georgia? New York. New York. Glad I like the East Coasters. I, I like the East Coasters because they tell it like it is. Yes, you know? totally, totally. That's me. That's me. I'm in the I'm in the Midwest in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the World Nerve Center and headquarters of chaos at this time. Oh yeah, <laughs> the craziness going on. But Midwesterners don't make a decision. You know, mm -hmm. they're really hard to sell them because they never want to make a decision. And then mm -hmm. the West Coasters they tell you like it is, but that's not really like it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's my summary of the East to the West. <laughs> How long have you been in New York? All my life, practically. Um, I grew up in New York. Well, my parents are from the West Indies in Jamaica. Uh, Jamaica, I, my Irie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, my sub and I siblings were born in Jamaica, but I was born here. And, um, you know, I've been in New York most of my life through elementary school, through junior high, high school, you know, college. So, you know, I, I love New York. New York is, is a good place to be. Is it uh, like they show on the news now? The streets kind of like vacant? They are, they are. But wow. you know what? I think that, you know, one of the things I talk about too with what's going on with this pandemic is that this has forced us to come to a new consciousness level. Yeah. It's been a consciousness level shift. And I think that even though some people feel like they're being in inconvenienced in so many ways, I think it's definitely pushing people to start thinking on a higher awareness level to look at their life and look at what's the priority and look at what's important and look at what is is serving you you know a lot of people are looking at this saying you know what this is a new normal but you know what i'm realizing that the old normal was not serving me meaning i wasn't happy i wasn't okay with the rat race and running every day and and doing things as you know i was put in a position to do, but not being able to be, to freely make choices. So yeah. I think that people are starting to now embrace this new normal as a consciousness level shift. And some people are choosing this moment to liberate them and not paralyze them. And that's the choice that we have. You know, my background was in the events industry, like I told you earlier, um, doing magic got me in the event industry, then producing events and then doing what's called event marketing, where you use a live event to promote a product or service. Just finished my thing in March, then March 12th, all of a sudden COVID came along and stopped the events. And at first I was thinking events, hospitality, travel and tourism, that's the lane I'm going down. All of a sudden, er, everything stopped. So what am I going to do? So instead of panicking, take a deep breath and go, you know what? online marketing. So that's where I've gone now. And the reality is that's where I really want it to be. I want it to be. But something had to, to force you into that yeah. pretty place. Much did, yeah. And that's, that's what normally happens, Brad, in life. It's like when your back is up against the wall and you think you're, you know, you're moving and it's like, wait a minute, you know, stop. I have a different journey for you and a lot of times that journey is right there but we're so used to doing things the way that we know or the way that we um, are used to because we're habitual thinkers and of course we identify things with our experiences or our past skill sets or our past jobs and so therefore we gravitate to those things that we are um, comfortable with and so now when you're put in a position where it's like okay this is different I, you know, it's something new, something I don't know. It's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? It's nothing bad about that. What it does is when you are put in a position to do something that you haven't done, it, it really helps you to evolve and expand your mindset and your way of thinking outside of the box, because it's really about right now thinking outside of that box, you know, not yeah. thinking the way you used to, not thinking the way that you have done over so many years, but now being put in a place where, okay, how am I going to be creative? How am I going to be innovative? How am I going to turn this business into something else because of the position that I am in now? And that's what it's really about. So, yeah, you, you, I think, classify yourself as like a lifestyle transformation coach. So this yes. must really be working for you because 
people have all of a sudden been thrown into a lifestyle because now you can't just go to work and escape your family and then go home and escape your work co-mates. You're kind of right. like in that spot. So you kind right. of have to transform. And it isn't so much, um, you know, like a, like a forced kind of thing. It's sort of more of a morphing and it's okay. It's okay that you, so you kind of guide people through that and kind of let them know that you're not really backed up against a corner because it's not, I, I don't like to think thinking outside the box. I like to say think without a box. Exactly. There really, really isn't any corner that you're really right. backed into if you just break through the walls with your right. consciousness. And it, I think people like you, like I met, my wife is a coach. And I think mm -hmm. it really helps to have someone else because I can get into my own self-talk. Right. And I can tell right. myself only what I already know. And then we need someone like you to kind of come in and go, hey, have you thought about this? And then you go, whoops, I never thought about that. Right. Well, I think that the biggest barrier to people, and in, in, in we talk about transformation. What is transformation? Transformation can only begin once you start letting go of your past experiences, your past expectations, your past preconceived notions of what you think happiness means. And so it's letting go of anything, anything can be difficult, especially when you have old thought patterns and old bad habits of doing things. So it's all about getting to that place where you can start to find personal peace and what figuring out, well, what is it that I really want and what is it that's going to truly make me happy? I think that once people realize there are two mindsets that controls your decisions, it's the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. And if you don't know that everybody has one of those two, so you either have a fixed mindset or you either have a growth mindset, you definitely have one of those two. So when you have a fixed mindset, you, you think that, you know what, I'm not good at this. I can't try this. I'm going to fail. You know, I, I don't know how to do this. You, you, you talk yourself out of things. It's like, it's an, I haven't done this, so it's not something that I can do or that I can try. So that's having a fixed mindset. When you have a growth mindset, you realize that you, don't, you can do things that you haven't done, meaning that you will try something, you will learn something, even as you were talking about before, Brad, about you wanting to get into you know, taking your business to a new business on a, a new um, wavelength online and take it to a new level online. But then at that point, did you know how it was going to happen? Most people say, well, you know, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to do that. But when you have a growth mindset, you teach yourself things. You, yeah. you don't say, I can't. It's how can I do this? So those are the two different things that definitely shapes your life. You know, most experts estimate that most people have between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts a day. And of those thoughts, 80% are habitual thoughts and 95% are negative thoughts that are repetitive. So that is why you're in this spin because of the thoughts that are going through your mind that's actually making your decisions for you. And most people don't even look at it that way that, wow, you know, it takes more work to think positive than it does to think negative because yeah, negative doesn't require any energy. It's just like, you know what? That's not going to work. I'm not going to try it. Or you know what? That's going to end up, you know, failing or it, it, it doesn't take energy, but to think positive, that takes more work. Well, it's that the takes... negative stuff where you're looking through the rearview mirror, looking at what happened in the past. It's not really relevant. And you start basing your decisions on stuff that happened before, and it's not relevant. It's like trying to build a new business with eight track tapes. It ain't going to work. And Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In anything in life, whether it's a new business, a new relationship, we tend to um, hold on to past experiences. And what happens when you hold on to past experiences? You hold on to pain. And when you hold on to pain, you don't want to experience that again. So you know what? You say, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try that again. I'm not going to go there again because you know what? I felt so bad when this happened. And when you hold on to that emotion, that is actually blocking you from moving forward because it's blocking you from making new decisions based off 
old experiences. So that's all you are holding on to. So part of moving past, and one of the things I talk about is how to create the life you love, you know, and it's not hard to create the life you love. It's really about figuring out how to take your, your talents, your gifts, your natural abilities, your skills, your education, all those things to connect the dots. To what? To live in your purpose, to know what your why is. And so one of the biggest questions you'll ever ask yourself is, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I here? And when you start to ask yourself that question, that is the beginning of your transformation. Why? Because you want to go past the surface. You want to go past what everybody sees on the external side of you. It's really about digging deeper and finding out, well, who is this person? You know, like I say, like my mom, when I was born, they gave me a name. I went on this job. They gave me a title. You know, the society give us labels, right? There's so many labels around us. You're this, you're that, you're that. But who am I really? Who am I underneath? all this stuff who is my true identity who was i born to be and once you start to dig in deeper into that layer of yourself then you realize that wow i have all these gifts i have all these talents i have all these things that i didn't even know that i had yeah and again you know for you for having someone that, that's outside like a coach or something like that. I, I just got done hiring a coach. As soon as my event stuff fell apart, I hired a coach to kind of give me a refresher on this internet thing. And he honed me right in on don't brand your, I, I have a bunch of synergy stuff. Don't brand the synergy stuff, brand, brand the magic Brad stuff. And then get focused on my YouTube thing. So I'm doing a lot more of these videos. So I'm focused now, whereas Normally, I probably would have tried to do my old event stuff with my old stuff, but I had to have someone else kind of, you know, jog a little bit and get me back in line. And it's really helpful because, you know, doing it by myself, looking at the past, I would take all those old tools and try and build something forward. And you really need someone else to, to, to shake you loose and get you going because there's Definitely. something, like when you said the why, like some people say, oh, I'm going to get a job. Well, what are you going to be? I'm going to be a lawyer. Why are you going to be a lawyer? Well, because they get paid a lot of money. Okay, what are you going to do with the money? Well, I don't know. You know, you're, you're going to buy a big yacht or something. I really don't like boats. Uh, so you got to get clear on what the hell. Why are you doing it in the first place? At least you're going down the right freeway, you know? Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that I teach as a life coach, because I am a lifestyle transformation coach, I'm a change agent. Why I say that is because it ties into my mission statement, um, which is I, Georgia Woodbine, am here to empower, motivate, inspire 1 million plus people to change their mindsets, to transform their lives. So that everything that I do is tied into my mission statement. And I always tell my clients, you should come up with a mission statement for your life. Mission statements are not just for non-for-profits. They're not just for corporations or organizations. You should have a mission statement for your life. Why? Because when you create a mission statement for your life, it helps you to stay grounded. It helps you to stay focused. It helps you not to um, spend time doing things that are not tied to your mission or your purpose or why you're doing what you're doing. And it has to start to make sense at some point because what happens is when you don't have a mission statement, you're pulled here, you're pulled there, you're pulled there. And you're like, you don't even know why you're doing what you're doing. You're just spinning your wheels. You're just wasting so much time in so many different areas, doing so many different things. And, and you don't even know why you're doing it. So one of the things that I teach my clients is to create a mission statement for your life because when you start to create a mission statement for your life, it starts to give you more clarity and focus on what is your motivation behind what you're trying to accomplish. And I always tell people, like you talked about, some people saying, well, why do you want to be a lawyer? Because I want to make more money. It should not just be about money because you know what? Your motivation is not going to last. Right. It should be bigger than you. It should be bigger than money. And once you understand that when your purpose is tied to serving others and helping others solve problems, you won't have to worry about money. Money is not going to be a problem for you. Trust me. <laughs> that makes a whole bunch of sense because I'm 63, so I kind of been there, done that. But what you just got done saying about having a personal mission statement, that was a light bulb moment. So I thank you for that. Yes. 
if you, if you try and put it into like a real life analogy, like if I was going to get, say I wanted to uh, get to New York and have coffee with you. That's what my vision is. Right. Now I got to have a mission to get there. So exactly. if all of a sudden I said, okay, to get to have coffee with Regina, I got to, I'm good. To Georgia, I'm going to go over to North Dakota, and then I'm going to uh, maybe take a trip down to Florida. No, I, I'm, I'm lost. Right. But if I have a focus and a mission and a vision, then I just get in the car and go down 90. Exactly. <laughs> you, because now you have a blueprint. You have a roadmap. Yeah. You know where you're going. You know what I mean? It's like when you don't have a mission, you're just pretty much on a boat and you're in the middle of the water and you don't know if you're going to the north, the south, the east, or the west. You're just in the middle of the water and you're like, yes, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there, but you don't know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing this life coaching thing? Um, I started doing this in 2005. Okay, wow. That's in 2005, ago. I've been doing it since 2005. And I think that for me, my aha moment was when I was on my job, you know, I was on a job that I really didn't like. I was working long hours. And I remember for me, it was getting to the point where it physically affected me, where I had gotten sick on the job. I had passed out. And I went to the hospital and they said I was dehydrated and I ended up being in the hospital for like a week or two. And then I remember taking time off from work and I had to ask myself, do you want to go back to this situation or do you want to change? And that was the moment for me because I remember they called me and they said, you know what, Georgia, you, after, I think it was three months, I was on disability and they were like, you got to come back to work. And I said, okay, I could go back to this or I can change something. And I decided to change something because I realized that I could not go back to that feeling unhappy, to that feeling stressed, to that feeling overwhelmed. And why am I doing it? It's not even like you're doing it for your own business. You're doing it for somebody else's business. Yeah. And so you're like, well, what, what's the point of this? You know what I mean? And I think that for me, that's when my shift began to happen because that's when I wrote my first book. And I think that in life, when you do go through uh, painful experiences. You do go through things where, you know, you're at a point in your life where you're like, well, what do I do? Where do I go? Where do I start? And you do get to that point. But well, that's a good place to be. You know, most people are afraid to get into that place in your life where they start confronting their fears. Because when you start to confront your fears, then you realize that there was really nothing standing my way to begin with but me. You know, right. we, we, we create our own fears. Who create fears? No one, no, one, <laughs> no one creates your fears. You, as an individual, create your own fears. So once we can get past that, we can realize that, you know what? No one's really stopping me from whatever it is I want to create but me. Mm -hmm. So how many books do you got? I have several books. Um, my first book was um, How to Make Big Bucks Without Selling Your Soul. I wrote that book actually while I was working in the entertainment industry because I did work in the entertainment industry for a little while. And just seeing like the things that were going on in the industry kind of like helped me to write that book. And then I started to branch out. So my whole thing is about allowing yourself to come to that oneness of who you are, coming to that truth of who self is coming to self-awareness. Once I did that, I realized, wow, I have the gift to write. I started writing so many books. I wrote a relationship book. I bought, wrote a, a book on um, career development. And then what did I do? I took that book that I wrote on career development and I ended up teaching it in high schools and colleges and I created a curriculum. So like once you get those balls rolling with that creativity, yeah. you can you can turn it into income. You can figure it out how to make it generate income, but it's all about you taking that first step. You know, you can't get to the next level if you don't take the first step. If you're still standing back saying, you know what, I want to cross this path, but I'm just afraid of all the things that can happen to me once I, on my way there. So you're so busy thinking about not getting there. And my whole thing is when you're in a place of purpose, you focus on the vision. You don't focus on all the, the obstacles and all the right. challenges and Solutions all the setbacks. Focus. Yeah, you focus on the vision. You don't worry about how you're going to get there. You just know that. Just see yourself there. See yourself on that side. Feel the emotion. And that's what manifestation and visualization is all about. It's about feeling that emotion and bringing that and attracting it to you so you don't have to chase. It's not about some chasing people are, Some people that are focusing on the fear thing, they end up... Uh, 
figuring out ways not to lose as opposed to figuring out ways to win. Exactly. So all that energy is being put into thinking about all the negatives and not the positives. And yeah, that's and definitely not going to get you on that path no. to self-awareness. You know, it's about letting go. I think the biggest problem that we have is control. You know, we want to control when this happens, how it happens, who's going to be involved. So we're so used to being in control of so many areas of our lives, especially with this pandemic. Once you lose control, it's like, I need air. I can't breathe. <laughs> you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do because you're so used to being in control. And when you're in a, put in a position when you don't have that control, that's when your character is tested. That's when the truth of who you are is really tested because it's really about how you respond and react to that stuff. You know, so I think that in the world right now, we're all being tested. We're all being shifted. And we're all realizing that all the control that you thought you had, even over your money, you really don't have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's forcing you to look at things and say, you know what, wow, you know what? I really don't have control. Even though I think I have control, I don't really have control. Over well, I've changed doing. a lot of things. Like I, I've seen these situations, these little memes up there where they show the, the path of an entrepreneur is a straight line. And it's not, it's squiggly all over the place. And that's really how marketing- It's like this, it. it's, this is what an entrepreneur is. <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes backwards. It's like a roller coaster. <laughs> sometimes backwards, it just does that, and just understanding that that's the way that it is. I mean, everything's kind of that way, you know. Absolutely. You know, even the freeway life. system, it isn't just a straight line all the time. Sometimes you got to go over Never the mountain. Never straight line. You got to go under. And you know what? What fun would it be, Brad, if it was a straight line? That's right. There's no fun in a line. straight line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well. Georgia, could you tell us how to get a hold of you in case someone sees this on the internet as it's bouncing all over the place? And you know, sure, go, sure. Well, how what do I get wanna, a hold of you? Sure, I want to share with your audience. I want to give them a free gift. Oh. It's the five secrets to turn your passion into profits. It's a free guide, and they can go to my website www.georgiawoodbine.com. When you go to my website, you put your name, you put your email in, and I will be sending you that free guide immediately right into your inbox. And that kind of gives them an idea to, to not be scared. Just take baby steps until you can run, right? Absolutely. Take one day at a time. But it's all about taking action. No action, no results. No action, no activity. No That's action, right. no success. <laughs> you can't hit the ball if you don't swing the bat. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, Georgia Woodbine, I appreciate you. This has been a lot of fun. I, I really like your energy. You're up there beating, making it all work. Thank so I you. Will, uh, get, I'll beam this up to the universe. If you want to stay on, we'll have a little chat. But other than that, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it in the can and shoot it out to the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>